has been a horrific last few months. I'm not only talking about life in my city of Delhi, where we have seen inferno type heat. We have seen crippling water shortages. Um, and then of course, from water shortages, with one rain, the entire city was brought to its knees because we had flooding and that flooding brought its own devastation. How this vicious cycle of heat, of water scarcity, of floods is only going to grow in an age of climate change. So I am Sunita Narayan and in this episode I want to talk about planetary health and our health why this heat is unusual, how this heat, the temperatures are increasing. We also spoke about the fact that what this is doing is to increase nighttime temperatures. So where nighttime would reduce temperatures and therefore bring an ability for our bodies to cope, we don't see that anymore. Now, what does this really mean? If you look at the numbers, you will tell me that actually we don't have such devastating numbers over this period when India has seen very high temperatures. And I will tell you that's only because we actually do not record the deaths that we see, the mortality that comes in as heat related deaths. Because remember, a lot of the deaths happen and when people go to hospitals, they are, they, they are more vulnerable because of underlying conditions, cardiac conditions, because of kidney conditions that they have, because of the fact that they are already old and they are more vulnerable, therefore, to the heat stress that we would see in our cities. When there is fertility even, the doctors will put it down not to heat, but to the fact that they had an underlying health condition. We also don't record these as heat-related deaths because of the fact that the people who are most exposed to the heat are the most, are the poorest. And they are the ones who do not have access to the cooling appliances that many of us have. They are the ones who are most exposed because they are construction workers, they are laborers, they are the ones who are the victims of this heat but their deaths are often put down as uh, deaths from unknown causes or they don't even make it to hospitals. So we have got a serious underestimation when it comes to the scorching, infernal type heat that we saw and the impact on our bodies. But most importantly, we also have to understand that heat is not a notified disease. Now, when I say it's a notified disease, it would mean that any death related to heat would have to be informed, recorded. Now, it is not recorded because it is not part of that list of notified diseases. So it is not even documented, it is not listed. And this is why we are not, we do not understand the health impact of this heat that we saw. And I think it's very important that we begin to recognize this because unless we understand the relationships of the changing climate to our own bodies, to our health, we will not also understand the need to make the change in our world so that we can combat emissions, we can build differently so that we can live with uh, the changing climate. But let's move away because heat, the season of despair of heat has actually changed to another season of despair, the season of too much water. So we've moved from the time when we had no water to a time when we have too much water. And we now have floods across our, our, our cities, across our country. Now, what does this too much water mean in terms of our health burden? 
there are two major changes that we are beginning to see. One, we will see now more and more uh, mosquito related diseases. We've always had malaria, we've always had dengue. But remember, the conditions today are perfect, ideal grounds for breeding of vectors. We will, we will get more rain in fewer number of rainy days. We will then get intense heat. And if we do not clean up our environment, if we have water that is stagnant water that is flowing, we'd have garbage in our streets. We have um, areas where water should not be there, whether it's our coolers, our water tanks, uh, we will see more mosquitoes. And that then is going to add to the disease burden in our cities, in our country, and we are beginning to see it. But what is even worse today, and something that I'm finding very interesting that we are not noticing that it's happening, is that the disease that we thought was a disease that we had eradicated is back again with a vengeance. I'm talking about cholera. I'm talking about something which is a bacterial disease, which is just because of dirty water, dirty environment. The World Health Organization is now talking about a time when there is a resurgence of cholera. WHO has moved cholera into a grade three public emergency, which is its highest level for internal emergency. If you look at the data that WHO puts together for the entire world, but largely this is from our part of the world, then between January 2023 and March 2024, you, the world has reported almost 0.65 million cases of cholera, and there have been over 6,000 deaths. We know in India, we are beginning to see cholera back in many of our metro towns. Now, all this is happening again because of our, the inability to be able to make sure that we can clean up our environment. You know, some years ago, in fact, many years ago, I had visited a small town in Gujarat called Kheda. And at that time, malaria was a big issue and a big talk in the country because we needed to deal with it. Even now we need to deal with it. We just don't talk about it enough. But at that stage, there was a lot of work happening through government scientists to deal with, to combat malaria. And what turned out in this experiment that was being done by the Indian Council of Medical Research by a, by a division of this, um, of ICMR, was that the best way to combat malaria, to eradicate malaria, in fact, was to clean up the environment. So what this experiment in Kheda had done, that they had cleaned up their drains, they had made sure there is no stagnant water, they had made sure that there was no garbage um, on the streets, and as a result of it, they, had act, they could actually document that malaria, the instant incidence of malaria had gone down. Such a simple intervention, cleaning up our environment to make sure that we can deal with the health burden that we have. It is not climate change that, that is bringing malaria to our midst. It is not climate change that is bringing cholera. The fact is, it is the mismanagement of our environment. The fact that we are not cleaning up our environment, we have garbage in our streets, that we have stagnant water, that is being exacerbated by a changing climate. Remember another fact, that it is the flight of the mosquito is not like a flight of a bird, okay? A mosquito can only fly at the most 100 meters. It is the fact that a mosquito which is breeding in unhygienic conditions, infects a human being. It's the movement of a human being that then moves the disease from one point to another. Which also means that we have to understand that nobody is safe till everybody is safe. And this then puts the 
focus on the need to link health, our health to the environment and to planetary health, which is climate change. These connections between our bodies, our health is absolutely critical. We must join the dots. We must make this connection because it's only when we understand how our health is being compromised, how we are affected and will be increasingly more affected that maybe we as societies will push for things to change. We know that if the air is foul, it impacts our bodies, it affects our lungs, it affects our ability to breathe. It even has huge health impacts in terms of uh, mortality because of heart and other uh, diseases. We need to understand what it means when you have polluted water, what it means when you have intense heat. And we also need to know that there are solutions for this. Because at the end of the day, we don't need to have garbage on our streets. We do not need to have stagnant water, which is, which is there because we haven't been able to make drainage. We need to make sure that we can clean up our environment. I want us to discuss this more and more, is that often these two communities of the environmental community does not talk to the medical community. But these communities must come together in one voice. Because at the end of the day, if the planetary health is compromised, then it will compromise our health. And that connection has to be understood and we have to fight to make sure that we can secure a world in which we can have well-being and we can have the right to a clean environment.